tonight we're just going to be painting a waterfall. Um, one of my subscribers, Douglas uh, Greer, has asked for how would you put in a sky um, in a waterfall painting that I did, and so that's what I'm going to do tonight. So I've wet the whole page, and um, and we'll get painting. So I'm just going to bring in a bit of a sky. I've got a mix here of um, cobalt blue and light red, which I do, you'll probably notice I use a fair bit, and this has got a bit more light red in it than, than, than normal. So. Let's just uh, bring in a bit of, it's going to be like a, um, Sorry if this goes out of focus. I'll try and
water is still moving down the page and that's a good thing I want that direction of movement of water and the waterfall Sorry if you can't see this very well, but I have to really, if I want this to continue to be a you know, good movement on the page, I really have to have it at a, you know, I don't know, this is about a, a 45 degree angle. If I just have it just at 10 degrees of, of tilt, it's just not going to cut it there. The water's not going to move down the page fast enough and it's going to start to disperse fairly evenly and that will look extremely different. So um, nice thing about this mix of uh, light red and cobalt blue is you can start to see it separate and you get this beautiful light red hue around it when you're going wet and wet and uh, I do love that. It starts to granulate and it starts to separate a bit in the wash. That is definitely down for a second while I get some hair down. get those hairs out now and then I dry it.
really catches the eye. A lot more than these little discrepancies that are caused by the hair up until now. If I left them on there and then dried it completely, then they could potentially become the subject. A painting that has almost no sharp edges at the moment. That's one way of putting in the sky and then you get to create the landscape around the sky and, and, I, and I think that it just makes it much more a part of the painting than if I painted these in first and then I tried to put something in after all of that last thing I of course could do that um, but it's just uh, I, I think it's more likely to look like it's just been kind of stuck in there rather than being part of it. So that's just my general opinion, especially when you're starting out, you, you really want to make sure that your landscapes look like a, can, can he, a, a cohesive whole. All right, so I'm going to dry this now and then we'll look at any detail that we might want to add. So I've just finished drying it um, and then I have leaned it up against the wall and stood right back because what I'm trying to do is to figure out, can I turn this into a painting? Uh, and, and, and I think what you, know, you, you can probably see as well uh, as me is that there's just two very solid land masses here that's weighted too far that way um, and really what I want to do is take a bit of strength of tone out of that um, and, and then even from a distance this starts to look like it could almost be uh, a really really distant peak I could do something with that, but the first thing I'll do is I'm just going to wash this out of it, um, just uh, to uh, take a little bit of the strength out. So I'm going to turn this uh, upside down. So you can still see. Normally I, I, I would probably maneuver this board in a slightly different way, but just so you can see, we'll do it this way, okay? So, uh, I'm still going to uh, tilt it up a bit. Hopefully it stays in focus for you while I, while I do that. I'll move out of the way and I'm just going to spray across here. Take a bit of that tone out. And then that'll rush down there, but we can uh, easily just wipe that out. Wipe that out here. Light can be just just be taking that Alright, 
so I'm going to stand this up again uh, and then have a good look at it and then, and then come back again. So I'm just going to go and do that. So I've stood back and, and had a look at this and I, and I think it's uh, I think it's finished. A few thoughts are that I could put a little bit of detail in here uh, and I could uh, put some more detail and sharp edges in here. I could put some uh, a water line in here, but I think a lot of those things would just detract from the overall feel of this painting, which I really like. I really like this light source that's coming in, you know, from the from the top up here, and coming across through here, in front of this this mountain here and down in here. I think that's really lovely. So I think that that is essentially done. I I think I don't know if you can see this, but the paper is still. Um, damp underneath and it's still got some um, some curves in the paper so I really need to dry this thoroughly and, and like another painting that I spoke about before I'm not going to take the tape off right now I want this to dry really thoroughly before I do that because otherwise it will end up warping off the cardboard or off the, the um, MDF and then, and then it'll just be harder to deal with. So even though I store it flat in the in the in the in the map drawers, so I'm just going to uh, sign this. And when I do these style of paintings, I generally I sign it with this, which was my wife's bank stamp in Japan. initial over the top and the signature especially in these part these styles of paintings becomes part of the the painting and it helps even up the weight that's on this side and especially if you make that signature part of it you make it quite strong um, Just have to make sure you've got no paint on your hand. Also, that could ruin the whole painting. Now that is a little bit, and even though watercolors dry weaker than they look, it is still a little bit too, um, a little bit too strong. There we go. Nice. Alright, so thank you for joining me for this tutorial. I know this is on a large scale, but the good thing is, is that you could really um, paint this on any scale. You could just get some of those other paintings that I've been doing, the, the, the sizes that I've been doing. With you, you know, sort of you know, some of the exercises that we've done on this sort of size uh, paper, or, or this sort of size paper, just some some small bits of paper, and then doing um, this same exercise on a, a piece of paper that's that's that sort of size, or even half that again. So. Um, Yes, if you're enjoying these um, videos, then please uh, press like. And of course, if you want to know when I'm publishing my next one, which at the moment I'm publishing quite a few, then just press the subscribe button, and you'll be sure, and, and the uh, bell button, and then you'll be sure to be notified when I uh, publish a new one. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not always really into just sticking to an exact schedule all the time, but um, I do publish uh, regularly at the moment. So if you've got anything you'd like me to paint, then let me know and. And any questions, comments, then feel free to put them in. Thanks for joining me, and I'll see you again soon. See ya.